All right, here's a interesting <laughs> political factoid you can share with your friends this weekend. Um, the number one complaint that comes into a special 800 number hotline that the Obama administration set up for the stimulus. The American Recovery and Reinvestment Act is the official name of the stimulus package. What is the number one complaint? 40% of people who call that number, what do you suppose they complain about? They haven't gotten their share of the money. That would be a good guess, but that would be wrong. I'm, I'm waiting for my share. It hasn't arrived. It the number one complaint is about the signs that they put up at all of these construction sites that says paid for by the Stimulus Act. People feel the signs are boastful and self-serving and probably also very expensive. You don't need to put a sign up, all right? That's awesome. Unbelievable. That's like you know, that's like having lunch and then on a sign that says, this food was paid for by the really? Lone Star card. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever known someone, though, that like they do you a favor, but then they have to keep reminding My you? My uncle does that all I the time. I have an uncle that does yeah. that, too. Remember that time How you I liked that $20? car I gave you? How exactly. You like that, that, Never, that was 20 years ago. Yeah. He lent me $20. Right. 20 years ago. So Love politicians it. have that same thing. Love it. They're like our uncle. They're like that crazy... <laughs> yes. Our politicians are like the crazy uncle. <laughs> yes. All right, here's a politician who I think has a bad idea. Tell me what you think. Dr. Early, I want to get your opinion on this. Um, Carl Palladino is the Republican nominee for governor in New York. He's a Tea Party upstart. He upset an entrenched Republican to get the nomination. He's a really feisty, politically incorrect guy. He tells off-color jokes. He's, uh, he's in a long-shot campaign against uh, Andrew Cuomo for governor. He has this week sent out 200,000 direct mail pieces that smell like garbage, that stink intentionally mm -hmm. to make the point that things stink at the state capitol. I love that. Is that a good idea? I think that's fabulous. To make people's mailbox stink? It gets people's attention. What if they hold it against you? I think it's funny. What if they don't <laughs> look at it? Well, they'll, they'll wonder what the smell is eventually, and yeah. then they'll know it's Cuomo. So that's a brilliant. You think that's a brilliant piece of <laughs> well, I think anything that's it's different. Mail. We talk. We, the whole this whole uh, this whole segment has been about doing things differently, whether it's politically in the parties. I think anything that grabs the, the public's attention in a different way, I think that's creative and funny. I think it's funny. Is that a good political strategy, Doctor Ali? I I've seen worse. I don't think so. I you won't be I, using any scratch no, and sniff uh, mailers. No, no I'm going to smell not. your flyers. Um, you know, this is <laughs> what we were talking about earlier. You know, some people would do anything to grab the attention, just yeah. l just like that lady. But there are there should be some limits, and, and I think sometimes the way that the system works, we rewards people for doing the bad things. You know, the balloon guy. You go on the, all the talk yeah. shows. You know, you kill somebody. You write a book, and we give you a book deal yeah. and, and the movie Too deal. Much. And so so they see these things coming. Just like uh, Dan said, uh, where is my share? And, you know, sometimes they don't, if they don't see their share coming, so they will resort to any of these techniques. And I think this is going a little too far. If you stink up my mailbox, you are not getting my vote. That is correct. That is it. it smells All like right. traffic on 281. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm There's a faint I'm whiff of, <laughs> of stalled 281 traffic like on Dr. Ali's flyer. All right, very good. <laughs> see, he was being very subtle. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, since we have a, a guy in here having a birthday, I'll let you know this. Uh, a new study says um, women find men attractive no matter how fat they are, no matter how bald they are. I didn't mean to look at you, Dan. Sorry. <laughs> until the age of 55. Hmm. So you have until 55 to be in the game. After 55, women start finding those ages in men less sexy. The old age was 45. In the 80s, when they took the survey, it was 45. So 45 is the new 55. Oh, so it's a good thing, then, that people are being more open-minded and stuff. So I you and I, Jade, can hope that the age just keeps going up and, and up we and up, and we never catch the, it. The grandfather clause. Exactly. <laughs> they, uh, they questioned 1,000 uh, women. And uh, that says older men no longer look or act like grandfathers. They often look and act years younger than they really are. Man and children. women still find them attractive. They're man children. Yes. Is, that mean, is this really like saying That's that men thing, are immature? Yeah, yeah, I, yes. Yes. And is that really a revelation to us? To me, sometimes it is. Not really. 
well, no. Dan, you're, right. you're being very, very quiet over yeah, here. Yeah, Dan. Dan, Dan yeah, with exactly. the young girlfriend. It's it's all about the attitude. You you got to have the right attitude. And I think the reason you shaved all your hair off is because when a man shaves all his hair off, it's much harder to tell how old he is, isn't it, Jay? I think so, yeah. It it makes it makes guesstimating the age of a person much harder. You don't like it when people private investigate you. I, <laughs> I'll tell you why I shaved my head up. Why I shaved my head? Um, I I originally did it because uh, my wife shaved her head. For, for the first time she got hit with cancer. I thought you did it to, so that you could be fired out of a torpedo tube <laughs> and go through the water faster. No, nah, I've been fired out of a torpedo tube before, and, yeah. and then you, you can have hair. You can, okay. <laughs> That's not a fact. Overrated. Yeah. It's all overrated. Right. But, but no, it's, it's all in the... You, I kind of <laughs> sympathize a little bit with that, with that, um, that theory right there. Because... Uh, my girlfriend thinks I'm only 49. Is that because you've told her that? Or? <laughs> no, that's what she thinks. I didn't say anything. Yeah. She doesn't look at your wallet? Mm, <laughs> she rarely gets past the money. Okay. All right. Oh, boy. I was really worried about where that was going there for a minute. I thought about it. And I st- Thank you. Thanks for not going there. <laughs> well, Dan, it's always good to have you on the show in between your foreign stints, and I uh, hope whenever you're back in town, you'll let us know. Fun to be here, and wow. uh, I'd like to say that uh, it was a pleasure uh, listening to Dr. Ali here. It's a type of uh, individual we want running for office. Yes, absolutely. If I was able to vote in his district, I would vote for him. Uh, but I do know a few dead people I can dig up. Send oh, well, that's, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you and he can work that up together off the air. Maybe you can yeah. work that out. But, uh, no, uh, <clears throat> and uh, like I said, I I don't, uh, we got to quit judging by party. We got to yes. quit judging by whether you're a liberal or, a, or a, an extremist or whatever. You got to look at the individual. All right, Dan. Thank you very much. Always good to have you back on the show. And Dr. Ali, good to have you on Gang of Four. And we're looking forward to having you and your opponent back here again very soon. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Don and Jade and Jack. Uh, I just want to let people know that, you know, I am not a professional politician, and, I, and I'm running on issues. My issues are not democratic democratic issues. All the Republican issues. My issues are basically American issues, and I'm going to stick on issues, and I'm going to support any candidate, regardless of what party they belong to, uh, if they are good people. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Dr. Ali, thank you. We'll look forward to having you back again. And Jade Esteban Estrada, on your way to Chicago next, is that right? Yes, that's right. But my next San Antonio show will be October 28th at the Rose Theater, where I do my solo musical comedy, uh, Icons, The Lesbian and Gay History of the World, Volume 3. And uh, if I have the pleasure, I will also see lots of San Antonio at the Rock and Roll Marathon on November 14th. All right, very good. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Great job today on Gang of Four. We do it every Friday. More Jack Riccardi 10 to 1 coming up. It's a lifetime supply of oil from a country that's an ally of the United States. We're going to find out about it on KTSA.